D T YouTube show that, you know, we talk about comic books that are based on Dungeons and Dragons. Today we are talking about Skyward by Bree, if you have it up, you could you could give it to me. Wait, I do have it up. Never mind. Uh, uh, wow, Hinder we both. Uh, Joe Henderson, Joe Henderson, and Antonio Fabella. Hey, Bree. Yeah, with an orange cover by Lee Garber. Hey, Bree, I have a question. What? How is this a D and D book? That's what I said. I was like, I don't know if that counts. <laughs> I should have really just read it before I asked. Before I said yeah. yes. Because... <laughs> you probably should have. I was like... I don't know if Skyward counts. I knew I knew kind of what Skyward was about. But I was like, maybe that counts? And you said, yeah, I guess it counts. I was like, okay, then sure. <laughs> After <laughs> reading it. very It's a very pretty book. It's a very pretty book. It's well written. It tells a good story about post-traumatic stress disorder and all of that. It also has people flying. This is what I call the people flying book. <laughs> this is, as I explained it to Gray and Rachel, this is warnings about levitation, about the levitation spell. <laughs> so, okay, let me get, give the people a run a quick rundown of the book it the most basic summary i could give you is what if the world had very little gravity not no gravity but very little that is this yeah. book now Okay, I was reading through this book, trying to figure out how Brie got kind of D&D &D vibes from this. Okay. Wait. I don't know how you got kind of D&D &D vibes from this. This is not D&D &D at all. Why don't you explain to me how you got D and D vibes from this? Um, they, I kind of okay, I, the okay, it, 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 okay. So like, if I were to, cause I didn't, I didn't like read the book, but like, I kind of got the sense that it was kind of like, like it was kind of like this different world type thing. Cause, cause this is what I knew about the book before going into it. Um, just to give you an idea. I knew it was about a world where, like, people could fly, basically, in the air, and I I wasn't sure if it was, like, I ain't sure, I, I didn't know it was, like, about gravity. I was thinking more, like, wind, was what I was kind of thinking uh, when I was looking at it. Um, like, like, almost, like, kind of, I mean, I mean, it kind of does go with the levitating idea, because levitating is, is kind of like when you're, like, an air person, and you're, like, flying in the air and you could like move like I, like I was thinking like like basically there was a book where everyone was basically just air nomads <laughs> okay but again that, that's great for an avatar podcast <laughs> not really but still um this is a book based in purely science fiction <laughs> I was very much expecting <laughs> high fantasy bullshit. <laughs> this is straight up Earth. <laughs> <laughs> yes, yeah, so it is. That's what I didn't was surprised by too. I was surprised that it was straight up Earth. I was like, oh, this is Earth. <laughs> How did I? I just like the scale of these episodes. I thought I thought it was. I thought this was like a brand new world. Like that's what I thought. I thought it was like a new type of world. Absolutely not. No, <laughs> the, it, it's the exact opposite. In fact, it is Earth, probably New York or Chicago, in which. 
think it actually was more. Probably was, I, think I think it. Was, I think it is Chicago. Yeah. Like, it's a good book. <laughs> but, is it a D&D book? <laughs> Very much no. <laughs> I can't. You've given me a book that I can't even grab visuals. <laughs> That, to make it be like, hey, this is a great book. It's very D and D. So, yeah. Let me see. Let me see. Let me see. Let me see. I think we can find something here. <laughs> they don't cast magic. <laughs> they do not. <laughs> this is funny. Uh, yeah, it's not even like they have like a flying thing or like something like that going. No, nothing. This, this is very much. You have given me a book that is not D and D. I'm going to talk about it because it's a good book. It's an interesting book. It has an interesting concept of like, hey. What if gravity was reduced in the world? That's all interesting. But it is still not a book that is based <laughs> solely on D&D. <laughs> so, the So, today's episode is going to be titled Bree chooses the wrong book. <laughs> hey, that's a great that's a great title. <laughs> so right off the bat we got a 0 out of 10 on the D&D scale <laughs> an 8.5 out of 10 on the actual story and an 8 on the art oh yeah the art is gorgeous it's that. very pretty Yeah, I've, I get a lot of Dan Mora vibes from this art yeah which I, as everybody should know Who's been watching this show, so... Mm. You know, that one person... Uh... I love Dan Mora. So, I do love more Dan Mora art. Now, next week, I'm choosing the book. <laughs> <laughs> Let's see if I can do better than... Not <laughs> D&D at all. <laughs> Yay! <laughs> Good idea. So, now... Well, they should have went with Wayward, now that I think about it. Yeah, Wayward <laughs> might have been better, you know... At least that is written by Jim Zub. <laughs> At least I would have got... <laughs> I would have said... So... I suggested Saga, and you said no. Yeah. I'm not trying to... Jump into Saga yet. Just Lady. jump into the first volume, dude. It's a good it's no, a good book. Not yet. I'm not ready for it. <laughs> I Bree is trying to say he's not ready to cry. There are some tear jerkers. And I believe you. Oh yeah, no. It, it I, I have I have fully bawled my eyes out because of it, because of issues in Saga. But we won't talk about them yet because Bree doesn't want to get into it yet. So we'll talk about this book that isn't that isn't a D and D book. So Sky, the story of Skyward is very basic. It is in sh in the whole world, gravity is lessened, so people start flying. Now, when people start flying, at the beginning of the book, um, you see a man drinking a coffee, and then the gravity gets turned off. The coffee starts to float in the air, and he starts to float. This is when his wife is going to check the mail. 
or get a <laughs> newspaper or something. And she starts floating away. And she dies. We never see her again. That's it. You know, she ain't the secret villain of the story. We have a villain of the story. It's a pretty boy. It's a blonde dude. Yeah. But these aren't even our main characters. These are my our main characters' parents. You know what? It's a great book. People should read it. it I'm I'm going to put a link at the bottom of the comment that not the comment section. What's the word I'm looking for? The info box or whatever it's called. Description. The description. Description. Thank you. Hey, you got something right. <laughs> Brie, Brie will be put on probation from choosing books. <laughs> hey, 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 yeah, yeah, you didn't have to say yes. <laughs> no, we do this once, we do this every other week. You choose a book, I choose a book. You choose a book, I choose a book. You chose Stone Star, which was an actual D&D book. I chose White Trees. And then I chose Fair Lady, and then I chose, and then we both chose the D D and D book, which you didn't show up. <laughs> See, this this is just this is just our dynamic, you know, you guys. This is just how we are. This is how we are sometimes. So you choose the least D and D book you can find. <laughs> I have, I have D, I have... Well, well, it was the book I most wanted to read. <laughs> I, li- I quite literally have a, a pack of big two books that are basically D&D books. There's The Last God, which is a DC book that is, that they, ba- that they literally made a D&D source book out of. Oh, like there are so many books you could have chosen from. There's the DC Dark Dark Knight's Metal, uh, Green Arrow, Nightwing Suicide crossover. That's basically a D and D style adventure. There is Avengers. Yeah, Aven- yeah D and D style adventure. Adventure. I did not know that. Yeah, there's <laughs> there's the Avengers No Road Home or blah blah blah. Which has Conan, the Barbarian. I guess I could have chose that. It actually would have been something I would have actually enjoyed. Exactly. Like, you could have chosen <laughs> so many books. <laughs> I just, I, I was, I was all at a loss. Like, I don't know what to really pick from. So I just started. We have them. a list. <laughs> we have an entire list. <laughs> This very quickly became, hey, let's shit on Brie. <laughs> hey, hey, every week is at least some of that. It has to be at least some of that. <laughs> you know what? You are right. <laughs> but this week in particular, I kind of want to just ask Gray to come back so I can get some help shitting on you. <laughs> <laughs> the audacity of choosing a book that is not D D at all is just annoying me. I didn't know. <laughs> okay, I'm just gonna read the comicsology summary of Skyward. One day, gravity on Earth suddenly became a fraction of what it is now. 20 years later, humanity has adapted to... Humanity is in the word, dude! (laughs) Hey, humanity can mean a lot of things. Okay, but it also says Earth. Yeah, the Earth part is where you got me. 
Yeah. Or you got me. Adapted to <laughs> its new low gravity reality and to Willow Willa Fowler, who was born just after G Day. G Day is when gravity got loosened or whatever. It's pretty awesome. You can fly through the air. I mean, you sh sure you can also die if you jump too high. So just don't jump too high. And maybe don't get mixed up in your dad's secret plan to bring back bring gravity back that could get you killed. From writer Joe Henderson, showrunner of Fox's Lucifer, and artist Lee Garbett. Lucifer, Loki, Agent of... See, here's the thing. Here's the thing. You could have chosen the Lucifer book or Loki, Agent of Asgard. Those would have been fine. <laughs> Comes the I'm also not ready for Lucifer. Fine, Loki, <laughs> Agent of Asgard. Comes the story that, that, of a, that is cool. <laughs> comes the story of a young woman's journey to find her place in the world turned upside down. I'm gonna need you to tell me how that made how that sounded D and D to you. <laughs> <laughs> that did it because I did not read that summary. <laughs> <laughs> what did you read? What did you read that made you think, hey, this might be a D and D book? I was on YouTube. <laughs> okay, that doesn't explain it. Uh, I am now okay. First things first. Here's what's gonna happen. I'm going to add a source. I'm gonna add. Um, let's see, uh, let's see, let's see, window capture, add source, mm -hmm. uh, add new source instead, add source, I'm act. I'm doing this on the channel, here's what's gonna happen, here's what's gonna happen right now. <laughs> I am going to look for on YouTube a D and a, a review of Skyward. Let's give it a minute. Let's give it a minute. Let's give it a few minutes. <laughs> Skyward comic review which one did you watch that said D D, buddy <laughs> uh, I, can, I mean I guess I can go into my history and just type in skyward yeah do it let's let, let's find out how how Bree thought hey D and D Because I can't, I need to know, I need to know for the show. <laughs> What are you gonna do if you find out? <laughs> I'm gonna ask them, hey, do you think this is a D and D book? And they're gonna say, No, of course not, and I'm gonna be like, Yeah, I know. Is there I think it I'm gonna take Skyward. Yeah. Not good. Anyone on No, <laughs> you can't find it. Can. 
In D&D inspired comics. <laughs> you found it in oh. D&D inspired comics? No, 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 I'm looking. I know this is one thing I searched though. I searched out D&D inspired comics. Uh, oh, I know what happened. I know what happened. Go for it. Okay, okay, okay. So, I type in D&D inspired comics. Okay. Uh, I found Elf Quest. I read what Elf Quest was and said, nah, nah. And then I looked at what was also being recommended to me. I just kept going through the recommended until I could find stuff that sound interesting to me. And then I eventually robbed this Skyward. That's it. <laughs> I robbed it Skyward, I robbed it Wayward, and I arrived at Monstrous. <laughs> But I wasn't sure about Skyward, because I thought that didn't the sound of Glee D&D, &D, but I was like, maybe? But it sounds really cool, because it's flying people. I like flying. <laughs> okay. Here's why I just randomly <laughs> decided to listen to you. Because I just figured that you... You knew what book you wanted to do. <laughs> I didn't think, hey, Bree might choose a book that's completely off topic. <laughs> I wasn't sure. That's why I gave you a bunch of choices. Okay, but here's the thing. Here, Here's the thing. No! <laughs> Don't give me a bunch of choices. Just... Just look it up. Look up the book. <laughs> you make it sound like you don't have the ability to look up the book. You have Google. <laughs> Hell, you have... Freaking... Comicsology on your phone. Yeah, I could have looked it up in comics. <laughs> so I don't, I I don't, I physically don't understand. That's okay. It happens. It's also me. <laughs> this was a very me thing to do. Hey Dylan, why don't we do Skyward? Sure, why not? Mm. Oh god, this is not a this is not a D and D book at all. You know what? Monsters sounded really interesting, and I was really thinking about monsters. I probably should have gone with that one. You should have. Because that one actually, I actually, I didn't just read the description. I also watched a YouTube video, and I was like, Oh, oh my god! Cool. <laughs> read description. Read the description. It, it's a completely normal thing to do when looking at books. Like, I went on a deep dive on Monsters. I was like, I was really close to choosing that one, but then I was like, but do I really want to do this? <laughs> you could, we could have actually just done a Star Wars. We could have been like, hey, why don't we just do a commentary on Star Wars and how it's just basically a giant D&D &D campaign. And we would have been you know fine. We could have just done, we could have just done Star Wars High Republic. Oh my god, yes. Because <laughs> Star Wars High Republic... I didn't I literally said, this is just my Star Wars D&D campaign. This is just Star Wars D&D campaign right here. Yeah, I, I was listening to the book, like, because the book also came out. Charles Souls, Charles Souls wrote a book that was Star Wars The High Republic, and it's just a D&D campaign. But we could have, if we really wanted to, watched Star Wars, like, A New Hope, and just explained how it's a D&D &D campaign. Cause it, true. Cause it is. Cause it is. I'm sorry, young plucky teenager that goes on a quest with an old guy, a scruffy nerf herder, and a weird mythical beast. And they have like magic force powers. I cut. I now kind of want to do that. 
<laughs> we both have Disney Plus now. We could totally do that. Yeah, we could. <laughs> I say we do that next episode or the next two episodes. Okay, then. Because <laughs> I think that would actually be fun. Instead of me just shitting on you for choosing a book that is not D&D related at all. Uh, I'm going to take the time, I guess, to... Re- wait, wait, I do, I do have a D&D book, though, an actual D&D book. Oh, yeah, you have your Stranger Things segment. Yeah, I do! <laughs> and this actually, this actually is a D&D issue for once. This is a legit D and D issue. Okay, you do your Stranger <laughs> Things issue. I'm gonna start. I'm also gonna start a segment in which I talk about Eternals. Okay. Because they've oh. made the Eternals into a D and D book. <laughs> it's almost like D and D is becoming more relevant. <laughs> I could have just done the comics that came out. <laughs> we, could, we, could, we could have taken this episode to be like, these are the comics that came out this week. And we would have been fine. <laughs> Instead, we chose Skyward, and now we have next week an episode, a Star Wars Episode 4. You know what? I think it's going to become a trend of w- <laughs> the episode after we do... A book that's not related to D and D at all. Uh, a Star Wars ep- a Star Wars episode, <laughs> in which you and me just watch Star Wars, and we're like, and this is how I would do a D and D campaign out of it. Like Disney Plus has that feature of, um, watching. Like a group, a, like a party watch type thing. Mm-hmm. So yeah, we can totally do Star Wars. And I think we are going to do Star I don't think anyone in our group... Well, I think some of our group have to do but I don't think... Yeah. We could... We, we, could do, we could probably get some people. Yeah. We could probably get... Uh-huh. Jake. Probably. Anyway, anyway, yeah, uh... I'll get into that later. Um, uh, uh, what are we talking about? <laughs> Stranger Things, buddy. Stranger Things. Let's, there we go. There let's we go. at there least get go. a D and D. Let's get at least a couple D and D books in. Okay, then. Cool, cool, cool. So, um, yeah, this is probably the most D and D issue of all the issues because they actually did the campaign this week. <laughs> oh, they actually did. Stayed- they didn't do yeah, random been... family drama? <laughs> no, they didn't. They did the actual campaign this week. <laughs> they didn't do I mean, why Will's was... sister hates him or whatever? <laughs> no, they did not. <laughs> Ironic. Um, it was a little weird. Um, I was a little bit like, okay, um... Like, I don't know if, like, there were just different rules for one year or something like, like, the other, was oh, it yeah. the first edition? Oh, yeah, definitely. There was, like, there was a lot of rule changes when it came to first edition. Because... Oh, uh, okay. Uh, I think Violet can talk about it more. Yeah, because it definitely, it definitely wasn't played the same exact way like we played it. But you can see some of the stuff that we do. Like, for instance, Magic Missile was in this issue. Oh, no. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that was that was a thing. We got to see... Uh... Okay, so, like, we get to see each of the characters, like, they make up their own sheets. They get, like, their own characters, um, like, ready to play. Um, it's really cool. I thought it was interesting, though. Like, I think this, this this might, I don't know if this is just a wheel thing or a, um, like a thing that actually could happen, but I thought it was probably kind of weird that, like, Will made the D&D campaign and he had his friend DM it. 
Like he wrote that whole thing out and just had someone else just here. You need him in for me. Oh, I'm sorry. Is it kind of similar how you're doing the Disney campaign? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> like you know, I wrote all this for you, all the information you did, and he just gave it to him. <laughs> yeah, you decide whatever character is doing, and, and and even then, even despite him saying, "Yeah, hey, I'm the dungeon master," he wasn't really the dungeon master. <laughs> um, because um. What a, what, what a weird way to do a D D and D campaign. Hey, 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 Tom, what's up? I've written this entire campaign. Okay, do you want do you want to DM it? But you wrote it, and I want to play it. But you wrote it. That's not how this works, buddy. <laughs> well, why don't we make it work? <laughs> so there were like little scenes. There were like little scenes of of this guy like making decisions for all of them to like do like 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 like, like you know those things where you break the rules at certain points, even though you're not supposed to do that. He said, well, "That's not how that works." And then we was like, "That's not how it works." And I, or like the guy said, that's not how that works. And Will said, hey, I'll allow it. Even though he's not looking at him. <laughs> I'm just like, bro, really? <laughs> um, you just see them roll initiative. And um, I think the initiative rolls were a little bit different than in regular, in regular 5e. Um, I also regular. thought... <laughs> 5e. Um... Yeah, so yeah, we got to see them like do different like do different spells. We got to see like all their kids. You got to see like, the art of the care that they made all fighting together against like, this giant monster creature. Like it was just it was really cool. That's good. And a lot of fun. That's good. That's all good. Um, <laughs> still, <laughs> it's a still weird situation. Uh, what do you think of the book so far? Um, so far it's been fun. It's been Wait, fun I thought this was like a three-issue miniseries. I think it was four issues. Oh, okay. I think we had at least one left. I, I thought it like. was. I thought it was some weird. Yeah, I know it was a, I know. I know it was a miniseries. I think it was four. Ah, uh, okay. All right. So I'm gonna talk about Eternals. Um. Now, you would think Marvel, hey, Marvel wouldn't put out a D&D &D book. Uh, Kieran Gillen would like to tell you differently, because Kieran Gillen, I am very certain this man DMs on the regular. Uh, so, we start, so, this book, which is beautifully drawn by Isad Ribic, Ribic, something, uh, it... It's not in this. It's not like Bree's story where it's where you're like playing a D and D game or you know someone else is DMing your D and D game. Game. It's like you're in the D D and D game, and it's it packs powerful punches. It knows Kieran Gillen first of all knows how to make characters like D&D &D characters in the sense that he knows how to make someone fail, how to make someone react to stuff like us. And in Eternals, you kind of get the feeling of Kieran Gillen didn't want to make a superhero book. He just wanted to make a book about gods and gods killing. Like, we get the most asinine lines of like welcome back Icarus the Eternals are to are of one mind she is to be freed like you don't get that type of stuff in regular speak you get that type of stuff in freaking D&D &D campaigns and Thor books 
I, I, I think Eternals is one of the best things that is gonna come out of Marvel in a while. In, and that's including Dare, well, I mean Daredevil's the best thing that's coming out of Marvel, and then Thor. Um, but yeah, it's it's a good book. It's an interesting book. It is it plays very much like a D and D campaign. Like it has the story beats of like. Uh, the characters kind of starting out and exploring the world and all that, and then kind of it has that inciting incident of like, like, like say Lotus, the sister of Mumford, dies or something. In this one, they had the Eternals' leader die. So it's different from Stranger Things D and D, in which where you where you know that, hey D and hey this is going to be a D and D book. It's gonna talk. It's gonna be full on, let's go D and D style. Instead of that, it's gonna be, hey this is gonna be a D and D book in which it's going to be. You're you're on the adventure. And it's an interesting adventure. Bree. Oh. Like, have you read any of the Eternals? I have not. Uh, I know there's that one guy with the little bright, like, who's like, like I guess, who looks like he's always the leader or something. Oh, Icarus. Yeah. Yeah. Icarus. Yeah. And so, here's the thing about the Eternals book. You move between worlds. It's interesting. So you start off, I think, on the moon and then you head to Earth, you meet Iron Man, you see how the Eternals kind of see Iron Man. Uh, they fight, they get into a random encounter in which they fight a deviant and then they go back into into Earth and grab a hot dog and then they go to Olympia and they see that an Eternal is dead and now you now they're going to learn how like what happens when an Eternal dies so they go off they talk to uh, a couple people and then they go to a different world that is Titan. You know where Thanos is from? And they see a couple visions about like Icarus sees a vision about Toby Rob Robson who died and he's like he's it's like the fear spell is on him it, and he says, I'm sorry I failed and then Thanos comes. And that's like the bo boss battle of the book. And that's the end of the book. And it kind of captures you. Like a good story should. It should capture you at the beginning. So Bree, any closing thoughts? Uh, on... on on, on, on this episode in general, or on, yeah, on the episode in general, yeah. not on Eternals because you haven't read it. Yeah, got you. Uh, yeah. Um, so I'm sorry, you guys. <laughs> I think Bree has learned a lesson today. <laughs> For um that, <laughs> and um. Yeah, definitely um, check out Stranger Things if you haven't yet. I'm sure it's going to be in trade for you soon. I believe next year it's going to be in trade. So, yeah, check out Eternals. Check out Skyward because it's actually a good book. And next week's book, Bree is not choosing it. Uh, I'm going to say next week's book is... If I can find it. Oh no, next week is Star Wars. And okay, then, cool. And then the week after will be something different. I think it, it's either going to be No Road Home or uh, 
so, uh, one of the DC books. Uh, I hope you guys okay. enjoyed the episode. Like, comment, subscribe, do all the things. Because if we get monetization, I can start paying people. <laughs> <laughs> and then Bree could probably be motivated into joining the main campaign. Uh, <laughs> okay. Um, but yeah, I'll see you guys next time. Peace out. Bye, y'all.